and friends, supporters, and advocates of hemp engineering. Today, we have the great pleasure of talking to the president of the Hemp Treat Association in the United States, Mr. Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you for being with us, brother. Welcome. For, uh, thanks for having me. The others, you know, we've been trying to do this for the last couple of days, uh, like, like a day and a half ago. You connected with me at like 4.30 in the morning and, and I was and I was ready to do it, but I was I was a little <laughs> groggy eyed. And yeah, we I, I appreciate you uh, being so um, uh, flexible with me and uh, being willing to, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we're all up and present, you know? Well, uh, just having you on board and talking about your experience and everything that you are doing for the hemp industry is just uh, a big asset for the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, got some dogs barking outside. I want to be able to have this conversation in my studio, but uh, got some barking dogs right now. Uh, thank you. I just to clarify, um, you know, I am the uh, one of the co-founders of the association. Uh, Mr. Jacob Waddell is our is our is our present currently. Yes. And uh, yes, I, I um, you know, it was not my bright idea. It was a bright idea of a, of, of a, of a select few of us that uh, there was there was a need for advocacy, you know, beyond the individual or beyond the small corporation in the, in the United States, uh, specifically. Um, yeah, I participated in the International Hempcrete Building Symposium with Mr. Steve Allen um, in Brussels, Belgium, uh, in 2018, and um, you know that was that was such a you know tremendous uh, success. But uh, you know, talking to uh, Mr. Henry Vias and Maddie Mead, Tommy Gibbons from Hepatecture, uh, we felt as though it was really important uh, for us to bring this message to the United States to, you know, build markets, uh, to build, uh, you know, education, and uh, yeah, you know, this is what I've been doing for like the last four years now. You know, two years with the organization, and uh, you know, two or three years prior to that on my own. Well, uh, having said that, um, it is um, one, one, I must ask you, how did you end up in the hemp industry? Uh, well, I went to school for uh, industrial design. And, um, you know, in going to school for design, you learn about uh, using different materials to their strengths and understanding what their weaknesses are. And so, you know, I had woodworking class and I had a metals class and I had plastics and you know, ceramics. And, um, you know, in my adventures, you know, I had come across, uh, I've always been a, a, an advocate of cannabis. I've always been a, a user of cannabis. I found cannabis in my late teens. And, uh, you know, in my adventures, you know, hanging out with artists and musicians, uh, I found a copy of Jack Kerr's Emperor Wears No Clothes. And, you know, I read that, you know, it's, a, it's an excellent read. It's a great res reference of the history of hemp. Um, and, you know, it all just made sense to me, you know, the, the, the idea of canvas and rope and, you know, uh, you know, paper products and textiles, as well as a nutritional source, it just all made sense to me. And then, um, well, living here in Denver, Colorado, as we began to see, you know, cannabis legalization happening, um, I wasn't trying to be the, the, uh, the, the weed guy, you know, my wife's a professor at the University of Colorado, I'm a father of two, and, um, you know, I worked in the ski industry, I've already, you know, but, uh, you know, trying to be, be the, that kind of a uh, spokesperson, not that there's anything wrong with it, but uh, just for me personally, that's where, not where I wanted to be, but uh, as, you know, we started hearing conversations about, um, you know, industrial hemp, I was like, I, you know, I knew what that was and uh, that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be a part of that movement. So, um, you know, I wasn't uh, the originator, but uh, I would consider myself an early adopter, you know, as legalization here in Colorado kind of came online. 2016, that's when I first attended the NOCO. Yeah. And in the 2018, that's when we met and that's when we all ended up playing guitar in your, in your barn. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That was that was a good day. That was a good day. I, I, I like being able to host people in my house. Uh, I like having you know my our brunches here at the studio, and uh, I don't know that we're having it this year for NoCo, but uh, you know just with COVID and you know limitations. But uh, we I do hope to have them 
in the near future, hopefully by this summer, it'd be great. So tell us about your thinking of the prohibition, all this situation that has hurt the progress of the industry itself. Yeah, well, you know, um, I think that we continue to chip away and, you know, the more we can get our, our, our you know, our voices into the, you know, ears of our representatives and, you know, we're able to say like, listen, you know, this is not the devil's lettuce, but uh, this is truly uh, uh, a natural remedy that's been used, you know, throughout history. And uh, it, you know, it has a, a remarkable nutritional value uh, for, you know, individuals as well as our livestock, uh, the medicinal purposes, you know, from CBD to THC is like unprecedented. And, um, you know, it's industrial applications aside from all of that, you know, the fact that we can start a green revolution, you know, locally, you know, being able to bring back economies to, you know, small, small local, lo local farmers, and, you know, trying to build infrastructure within our neighborhoods and our communities, you know, never, you know, with, with uh, uh, COVID and, uh, you know, the economy, especially here in, in the United States, you know, there's, it's never been a better time, you know, for us to uh, find this new you know, billion dollar opportunity that's just sitting there waiting to be developed. And so that's, that's kind of what's, what we've been doing with the association and, uh, you know, my own personal efforts. That'll bring us to, to talk about your projects, what you're doing now, your dreams, what, what, what you're after. And... Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we've, uh, we've, we've identified some processing equipment and uh you know we're raising capital right now to uh to to allocate that equipment uh you know it's not just you know we're not going after just hemp herd but uh you know the pulp and the the, the lignans and the the fiber and you know being able to identify markets to utilize all those different you know finished products and um you know um, so, you know, working, that's my own projects, uh, you know, with the USHBA, we're trying to get, uh, you know, our committees up and established, you know, we have our committees, uh, communities of color committee that's been a tremendous resource. We also, you know, and, and also gaining some, you know, much valued traction as well as our education committee, you know, we're reaching out to universities and, uh, students to, uh, let them know about this, you know, emerging industry and you know as individuals are looking to uh look for employment or opportunities in their professional life you know what those opportunities could look like in the hemp industry um you know not everybody has to be a farmer you know we do need engineers and we need marketing people and uh you know processing people and uh, electricians and plumbers and you know there's there's room for everybody and so uh you know don't try to be changed the whole supply chain. The whole supply oh, chain. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. From genetics all the way to marketing. Yes. And everything. One hundred percent. Yep. So you know, I tell people, it's like you know, don't try to be me. You know, don't. Farming's hard. Not everybody needs to be a farmer. Um, you know, but uh, you know, work with your local farmers and uh, you know, find ways that you could utilize this you know amazing plant and you know its resources. I'm telling you, just having you on board, talking your passion and your energy, you know, especially when I'm so early here in Perth, <laughs> they wake me yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, you know I, I, I can't wait. I can't, I can't wait till they, you know, start opening up the borders and we can start getting back to our lives, you know, hey. we can start having work workshops and uh, I'd, I'd love to come down and visit you. I can't, I can't wait to, to have that opportunity. Of course. Um, and I guess you already mentioned your your position on regards to self sustainability or um, better say a circular economy uh, based on hemp. I I I I know because we have talked on how strong your feelings are about it. But I guess yes. to you know the audience to listen from from the mouth of the horse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, so our business, uh, Wonder Workshop, you know, we have a list of services uh, that, uh, you know, kind of re in, in reference to carbon sequestering. And so, you know, some of the things that we're trying to do as we build out these products and these finished products, these, uh, you know, base products is that uh, we want to have a 
as you say, a, a circular number that says, you know, this is the amount of carbon that's sequestered or this is how green the product is. And so from, you know, from seed to, you know, us recycling them or upcycling them or, you know, we want to be able to know what that life cycle looks like and how we're impacted by it. And, uh, you know, all, all of that, you know, whether it's the due to the transportation costs involved or, you know, the processing, the methods and processing, uh, the, maybe the chemical out, you know, the, the chemical waste or the chemical output, although hopefully we're not using, you know, a bunch of solvents and things like that. But, you know, as we industrialize these methods and processes, you know, that, that's that's going to be part of it. Right. So, you know, just using making sure that those are you know being used responsibly and being able to capture whatever you know, outputs that you know, there may be so that is, you know, it could be utilized in other facets. Um, but uh, no, I mean, you know, as far as far as carbon sequestering and, you know, uh, life cycle analysis, I, I hope that, uh, you know, as products and as this industry kind of develop, you know, we can have an impact on other industries, you know, and that's a great way to cross, you know, Cross, uh, cross promote into other industries, whether that's the food industry, uh, supply chains, or it's uh, the building industry and its supply chains. You know, there's just uh, endless opportunities there to uh, green up the methods and processes that, that we have right now. Well, um, uh, Eric, I'm telling you that um, as part of the job that hemp engineering is doing is to interface all those technologies that are being developed all around the world. Uh, soon after I talk to you, I'll be talking to Mr. Robert Skinner. He's a Canadian engineer that is uh, focused in artificial intelligence for the hemp industry. That will be yep. a killer. And I know that with the job that you're doing, um, the, the job that is being done in Denver, Colorado, it, it is the Denver is the center of the universe for cannabis. So I guess. <laughs> You know, you, you, you say that and then uh, we, you know, we, we look at what you're doing there in Australia and, you know, there are some really, you know, you're really developing your industrial applications and uh, seeing how they're, you know, building with hemp there. It's, it's inspiring as well. So, you know, we're, we're feeling the love there down under as well. Uh, we see what you guys are doing and, you know, it's just a matter, a little bit of, um, you know, we're almost there. I think that people are starting okay. to realize the opportunities and, uh, you know, we're realizing that, you uh, the, the supply chains that are up and established aren't working as well as we need them to be. And, uh, you know, I think that COVID uh, has brought light to a lot of uh, method, you know, just infrastructure that's, you know, debilitated. Also here in Texas, we see the, you know, the, with the, with the big freeze that we had a few days ago, here, uh, the, the, you know, just uh, our, our systems can, can be updated and uh, renewed. And, you know, I think that hemp can, be the foundation to many of those applications. Absolutely. I have always uh, said to most people that I have been uh, talking to that the hemp industry itself is a technological race more than anything else. So um, a lot of countries are doing, um, that are adopting this uh, plant. They are doing, we are all doing basically the same thing. Yep. But I guess Americans has a, a great advantage because of the of the light of the universities and the minds of a lot of good professionals can help um, or can keep helping the industry itself. That's my well, thing. what's unfortunate? What's unfortunate? You know, I um, uh, I'm I'm taking off my USHBA hat for a moment. You know, uh, but uh, I'll put on my 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 per my own hat and and say that. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that politics continues to be as divisive as it is. And, you know, the more we continue to point the, you know, point fingers and, and play the blame game. Well, we, we see that, you know, we see who the powers that be are beholding to. And, um, you know, this is where individuals like yourself, like myself, the people listening to this, you know, you need to get involved. You need to, you know, speak up and say, no, this is, you know, this isn't what we're asking for but this is what we demand, you know, they work for yeah. us and, you know, we need to remind them that that's the way that this, you know, this agreement works. And, um, you know, we, we need to let them know that, you know, we demand, you know, greener alternatives to, you know, our energy and our homes and our, you know, our building materials, you know, um, for, you know, as far as hemp construction goes, there was a few years where, you know, it's like, you know, 
will we be able to reduce the price of hempcrete to where it is uh, comparable to traditional construction? Mm -hmm. And, you know, due to the fires here in Colorado and Oregon, Washington, California, you know, um, you know, we've, we took a great loss with the, you know, our lumber supplies and uh, we've already begun to see, you know, lumber prices beginning to increase here in uh, the United States, you know, drastically, you know, and, and um, you know, it's, as opposed to trying to wait for hempcrete to drop, you know, the lumber is actually coming up in price. So where I, now I think we can actually, actually compete on, you know, even footing. And, um, I, you know, we all know that hempcrete is going to come out on top because of, you know, all the properties that it can supply. Absolutely. And that is why I'm so happy interviewing you because I know that the um, many professionals that during your hempcrete convention last year, they were all basically claiming what, what I personally, as an engineer, know it, it is a must. We must come out with high standards, technical standards for the usage and implementation for large projects. Uh, that is a must. Uh, we, therefore, we will need architects and engineers of all types to get this industry where it should be. That's right. Yes, yes. Brother, thank you very much. It was a intense, your passion. <laughs> this is good. Would you like to yeah. add something else, brother, uh, to the audience? No, I just, um, you know, it's 2021. You know, 2020 is behind us. You know, well, I, I've been using the analogy that, uh, you know, 2020, you know, that was eyes wide open. And, you know, a lot of our, uh, you know, kind of, all of our humanitarian hiccups, you know, the bullshit that we deal with, you know, these, whether it's racism or it's the environment or it's, you know, our health or the national health system, you know, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, sex, you know, child sex trafficking, you know, the worst of humanity, the worst of humanity is, is, uh, is, is showing itself to us. And, uh, you know, we're not going to kick these, problems down the street anymore for the next generation to deal with you know it's here it's time for us to address them now and uh you know get involved and be a part of the change that you want to see in the in in, in the world you know and uh you know uh, you know times this is this is the time to uh you know get out of bed and uh go be the best you you can be and uh you know you know join the revolution it's coming it's already here. <laughs> it's here, brother. It's here. It's here. That, that, I, I believe it. I believe it. I yes. believe it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much for your time. I'll be posting this very soon. And, and well, thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, intense. Always a pleasure, brother. Full of passion. What else? <laughs> thank you. you, you we, we inspire each other, don't we? we? We inspire each other. We lift each other up. As the tide rises, we all rise. As if I, as if I, as. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Take care, brother. I mean, bye. Ciao. Ciao.